Hello F11 members and welcome to the post-production video tutorials for issue 89, June 2019. So here we have a picture of Glastonbury Tour in the summer. A wonderful sky in the background, nice evening light on the scene. Real drama in the sky. And I want to work through the processing on this picture that, so that you can see how I brought that out. And actually, if we look at the before and after picture here, you can see there's quite a radical difference. So a picture on the left, straight out the camera, pretty gutless. Um, all the information is there, though. When I was shooting it, I couldn't use a graduated sky on the, on the uh, graduated filter on the sky because that would have obviously darkened down the... Um, chapel on the top of the tour too much so what I did is uh, exposed so that I could retain the maximum amount of information and now I'm going to have to be quite clever with my post-production to get a believable picture but to bring out all that drama in the sky there. So what I'm going to do now is reset the image uh, and we'll start working through it. I just apply my default settings here which is a touch of sharpening <coughs> Excuse me, and uh, a touch, just a teaspoonful of vibrance there to start with. And uh, let's get going. So, first thing I do, as always, is look at my black and my white points. So, looking up at the histogram here, you can see I think I did a pretty good job of exposing that image there. There's a good spread of information there. Uh, I'm not clipping anything. So, if I just hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and move the white, slide it to the right here, I can adjust the white point in the picture to, to basically make sure that the brightest point is a pure white. It's made the picture look way too bright, of course. What can I do with my blacks? Not much. My histogram here is telling me that the toe, the darkest tone in the picture, which is probably here in this doorway, is a pure black. I don't really want to mess with that, so I'm going to leave that alone. As always, if in doubt, do nothing. Next thing I do is come down here and use the tone curve to darken down the picture. Uh, so uh, it's pretty simple, really, and already we're radically transforming the picture, aren't we? It's much, much better than how we started. Now the key thing is here, how bright do I want that chapel to look? Uh, I'd say that is about right, quite frankly, there, looking at the detail in the chapel and in the grass in the foreground. But uh, the sky, whilst looking a lot better than we started, just compare, still could, uh, I think, uh, be darkened down a bit more to give real drama to the picture. It was such a wonderful sky that evening. So I'm going to use the grad tool here and uh, just hold down the shift key and pull a grad into place, starting from the top there of the landscape there. Uh, and I'm now going <coughs> to, excuse me, darken down the picture to suit. Uh, that's probably too much. I'm going to go for about that. Put in a touch of contrast. And just look at my whites in there as well. If I pull my white slider to the right until I start clipping highlights in the brightest part of the clouds there. Uh, and now I can afford to put maybe a touch more darkness in there. Into the clouds, into the sky. That's, that's really brought out that quite nicely here. Put a touch more contrast in to the sky. Just a teaspoonful. Looking good, isn't it? But what's happened is I've darkened down the tower as well. Not too much, but discernibly. And so we're going to have to deal with this. Excuse me, I just need to take a glass of water here. So what we're going to do now is look at ways of making sure that the grad is only affecting the sky and not the tower. And I'm going to introduce you to a tool which was uh, a recent addition to Lightroom, uh, well, I think it was about a year ago or more, um, and it's called the Range Mask. And what this allows to do is adjust predominantly the luminance, but also the color quality of a selected area, the area we've selected using either the adjustment brush or the grad tool, 
Um, and I've, got, I've set it here to luminance. And what we're going to do now here, if I click on show luminance mask, and now that's the mask which, which has been applied with the grad. I'm going to affect, use this range here, slider here, to choose which tones in that selected area the mask is working on. So if I click that off again, and now slide the lower range in, what I'm doing is saying that the darker tones in the picture, the darkest tones in that selected area, are not having these adjustments applied to. And the further I go in with that, the less it's affecting those darker tones. Now, to get an idea of what I'm doing here, if I hold down the Alt key and now go use this, as I bring it in, you can see those tones in the top of the picture, the black tones, that's where the mask is being applied. Where that mask is being applied, where that black is showing, the grad tool is not working. And the further I go in, the more it is chosen. But what I want to do really is, in particular, I'm anxious, I want to control the fact that the darkest shadows here in the church are not being are not being affected by the grad tool. And so, again, hold down that Alt key, use this range slider here until I've selected those black tones there. Now, if you can see, if I do the same with bringing the range mask in from the right, the effect is that it stops the brighter tones being affected by the range masking. Sorry, the grad tool. Uh, and again, if I hold down my alt slider, and now you can see there, that's showing me also that now if I'm using bringing this range mask slider in from the right, it's selecting the brighter tones in the sky to not be affected by the grad tool. The trouble is, of course, that whilst all this is well and good, you can very, very quickly end up with something that just looks unnatural. And if I bring the range mask slider in from the right as well to preserve the brightest tones in the sky, I end up with a picture that's looking, just that starts to look a little bit unnatural. I always believe the less you do, the better. So I'm just going to use the range mask there to make sure that I'm not darkening down the shadows in the tower here too much. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to click on done there, but actually I'm not done because the tower, the top of the tower is still, you can see the effect of the grad darkening down the mid-tones in the tower. So what I'm going to do now is go back to that grad selection. So click on that, click on the grad tool, click on the little grey dot which makes that grad active again. And now what I'm going to do is come up here and select brush and come down here. And what I want to do is select erase and I'm going to manually brush away, click on the Select Mask Overlay, so it's showing me which area is selected. And now I'm going to erase away this area of the mask so that the tower is not being affected by the grad tool. So I can adjust my brush size accordingly using my Wacom tablet. And now I've got Erase here. Always select, make sure you've got Auto Mask selected because it'll pick up that edge of the tower quite nicely. It's a real, really useful aid. Just start uh, aid. I start with a relatively big brush here. What we're really trying to do is avoid those gruesome halos when you do this sort of thing, which can very quickly rob a picture of its of its impact, make it look completely unnatural. Come down to a smaller brush size here. As you can see, at the moment, all I'm doing, I'm not affecting the picture yet. All I'm doing is just selecting the area that the grad tool is being applied to. So I'm using a combination of the range mask and the, uh, adjust, the adjustment brush within 
the grad tool itself to select this area. As usual with, with these sort of things, it's uh, there are many ways to skin a cat. I could have done this a different way, but uh, I think this is a good illustration of how all this works, the combination of the range mask and the adjustment brush. Sorry, I'm concentrating, and as I'm a bloke, I can only do one thing at a time. And uh, there we go. And now if I click Show Selected Mask Overlay Off, now I've preserved the brightness in the tower, I've pre preserved the shadow detail in that tower, and I've got a sky there. It is nicely got some really good detail and drama in it. I actually think I could go a little bit darker on that sky now to about that or even more. Let's try it. Now I'd say about that, wouldn't you? Uh, click on done there. And actually I think I'm going to bright, darken down the whole of the image just a touch there. Uh, and now look again at my black and my white points. There's no clipping of shadows and highlights. And I think that's done a pretty good job on that picture. Let's look at the before and after again. Uh, and there it is. So I hope that was useful. Uh, this is the sort of thing we often have to do. Um, and uh, that range mask slider can, can be useful, but always, always be aware of going too far. Always strive to preserve subtlety and believability in your pictures. Okay, see you next time.